Lifetime Hearing Services, the premier hearing healthcare facility of the PD, is so very pleased to sponsor this next conversation with Nicole, my good friend. Sit back and enjoy. This episode of Conversations with Nicole is sponsored by the following. AB Tax Service. AB Tax is your key to financial success, providing quality bookkeeping, tax preparation, and IRS assistance for individuals entrepreneurs, and small business owners year-round. Give us a call today at 843-413-0050. Ann King, brand name real estate broker agent. Looking to purchase your first home, downsizing, or relocating and wanting to sell? Ann King, a licensed broker with brand name real estate, is here to serve you. Got questions? Call the pro. Who knows? Call Ann at 843-245-6486. 19th Green Indoor Golf Park. Looking for something different and fun to do? Check out the 19th Green, Florence's only indoor golf center, offering regular specials, discounts to first responders and veterans. Located at 112 Woody Jones Boulevard, Florence, South Carolina, 29501, next to Academy Sports. At Your Place Healthcare, need a DOT physical, don't have time to wait in line, need quick and trusted results, call At Your Place Healthcare to schedule your appointment today, 843-289-5061, or visit them online at atyourplacehealthcare.com. This episode of Conversations with Nicole is sponsored by Red Silk Media Group. Red Silk Media Group specializes in business branding, marketing, and advertising services for entrepreneurs, startups, and small businesses. Give them a call to schedule your free 30-minute consultation at 855-773-3745 or visit them online at redsilkmediagroup.com. Red Silk Media Group. Innovative design to expand your brand. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Nicole. Today, my guest is Jeff Black, the founder and CEO of Black Sheep Incorporated, a leadership company with clients in 24 countries. He's also a good friend, and he's here today to talk about his late son, John Landon Black, and the John Landon Black Foundation. Jeff, it is good to see you. Thanks for being my guest. Well, Nicole, it's good to be back with you. And I remember um, all those years ago when I was doing a fundraiser for McLeod Health and you were the judge. It was a womanless beauty pageant and I was robbed. Got first <laughs> runner up, Nicole. I think I you held out. I know you were supporting me, but that's okay. <laughs> yes, we do go back a long way we in did. our friendship and our work in the community together. And I would have to say, Meeting you that, that day was such a blessing because you and I have stayed in touch and in contact through all these years, through uh, different events that have been going on in the community, yes. through our work and through my work at the TV station. So I'm so thankful to have you in my life. It's It's been great to have your friendship. So thank you. Same here. I'm grateful as well. Yes. Yeah. So today, though, um, we're talking about something that's it's a tough it's a tough conversation. It's about your son, a beautiful young man who was 25 years old when he lost his life to drugs and you went through a lot with with his struggles and uh, your family trying to help him. So tell me your story and tell me John Landon's story. Okay. Thanks again and I I promised I wouldn't get emotional but I know we probably both will as I was preparing for our talk today. So um, I'm sending you my love and strength right now. Thank you. Um, John Landon Black was the sweetest member of my family. He had the best heart. And yet he struggled with the disease called addiction that so many people have. And so many families and lives are impacted. And Nicole, John Landon went to several rehabs. He was so dedicated to trying to beat this, this terrible disease. And at the end, just 
could not. And so uh, I'll never forget that day. It was May 13th, 2022. We talked several times a day. He was working and living in um, Goose Creek in the Charleston area. And I had not heard from him that day. And it was most unusual. And I got very worried and very nervous and started making phone calls only to find out that a roommate had discovered that he had passed away. And I remember that like it was yesterday. And yet I also know that our son struggles no more. There's no more heartache, heartache and pain. He is at peace. He is in heaven and he walks the streets of heaven with no dependence and just joy because he brought so much joy to us in his very short life here on earth. He's a a handsome young man, as you say, full of life, loved everyone, was involved in uh, humanitarian efforts with helping others. And I'd like to know, if you don't mind sharing, where did his struggles start? How did he even begin that journey of, you know, taking drugs and, and, and then the reliance upon them and how it took over him? You look at your family, you look at this beautiful young man, and you would think, how does this happen? The problem of drugs and addiction can impact anyone anyone's family, no matter how hard you try to protect your children, your loved ones, and help them. It's evil, and it can get a hold of a child. Tell me how it all began for John Landon. So this dates back to when he was um, in his teen years. And what we've discovered over time, Nicole, is that one thing led to another that led to another, right? This started off with with drinking, and then it progressed to marijuana. And then where did the next hike come from? And that led to cocaine. And John Landon's cause of death was due to fentanyl that was laced in the cocaine. Hmm. And so, my goodness, people have no idea what they're getting out there on the streets. And listen, I wish I had a magic wand and could make other families not have to go through what we've gone through. But you just do your best every day. But what we discovered, it was just the gradual, right? It was the one step up to the next, to the next drug, to the next, you know, high, perceived high. And... And we realized that John had these struggles and, and we you know, were so blessed and so fortunate that we were able to send John Landon to rehab, to try several different things. And, and I want you to know, too, tough love becomes involved. Yeah. Um, my wife is the stronger of the two. So she got there quicker than I did. But that day did come when I you know, had to tell my son um, as much as we love you, either you have to go back to rehab or we have to love you from afar. Yeah. Because you you can't keep doing this to your to yourself and to your family. And that was the hardest conversation. Probably the second hardest day of my life was having to give that tough love. But you have to, Nicole, because you as a family, you have to get to the point where you know, you've done everything you can, but Nicole, I think that people, you know, people have to realize this is, this is a disease. Yes. And, and John Landon struggled for so many years with this disease and um, we miss him terribly, but yet we also know he suffers no more. Yeah. And, And what, what could have been the hell on earth that could have happened to him? I know as a parent, you must have struggled and still do struggle as to why was John Landon the child who had, who became addicted. Some people just try these things as young people and they move on their merry way and it never becomes an issue, but it did for him. And so I think his life is proof that there are 
addiction struggles for for people that they just can't overcome sometimes and it's it's so tragic because you as a family did everything that you knew to do to help him and still you couldn't save him and i know that's a lot that's a lot for you and your family it is and yet Stephanie and I, my wife and I, take comfort in in feeling like we did everything we could. Yes. Right? We did everything we could. And, and, and yet I still question to this day, even though I know that deep down, Nicole, that we did, I still question to this day, what else? You know, what was the one other thing I could have done as the father that Stephanie could have done as the mother that would have given us a different outcome? Right. But when you have a disease and when you battle a disease, you know, I just think my son did the best he could every day. He just did the best he could. And I think your message is one of healing that you want for your family and that you would convey to others who are going through through this or have lost a loved one, the healing has to start in knowing that you did your very best and you loved your child and you wanted nothing but to heal him and help him. But that just did not happen. What do you do moving forward to keep your family close and to, and to help others? A lot of it is through this foundation. It is. And um, I I keep it close by in my office. This was the last birthday card I got from my son. Wow. And in it, he wrote these words. When I was hopeless, you had hope. And that became the, the theme and the mission of our foundation. And, and I want to tell you this, the John Landon Black Foundation was not created by by my family. Two attorneys in Banning, South Carolina, where John grew up, where we spent most of our life, where we're still so blessed to call that our our first home. Two attorneys came to us two months after John's passing and said, we can't let John Landon's death be in vain. We won't. We loved him. We loved your family. And so they came to us with the idea of establishing a 501c3 nonprofit, the John Landon Black Foundation. And that, Nicole, has just been a godsend. It's been a godsend on some of those days when Stephanie and I are just very, very sad. Something will happen with the foundation. And so last August, we had our official kickoff in Manning. 150 people came. We had news coverage. It was just a powerful day. And what people have committed to do um, has just been incredible. And tell me how the foundation helps young people like John Landon. So the foundation started off, and this is a little bit uh, with your TV background and my TV background, a little bit of breaking news that I'm getting to share oh, on conversations with Nicole. But the original vision was that we would sponsor a John Landon Black Foundation scholarship and that we would help people who who need financial assistance with rehab be able to get that. Those from the Sumter, Clarendon, Lee from that region because that was our home and these people have done so much for it. And so we have had so much generosity. I mean, in addition to family members, um, we've had um, several significant um, donations, but I want you to know the people who gave the $20 and the $25, so many of those folks did that, and that is added up to where we are now to a point with a strong financial foundation base to where the board is looking at um, starting in Manning a recovery place, a center in our son's memory that will be a place where people can go for AA meetings, for NA meetings, Al-Anon meetings. It will be a place where people can go who are in recovery, 
who need life skills, who need health skills. And so to think in in less than a year that through the generosity of so many people, small and large gifts, that all of that added has added up to such goodness that now the board is looking into a recovery center in Manning. So this is above and beyond anything we ever thought could happen. And and Stephanie and I, we we are advisors to the board, but we are not voting board members. This has really been such a grassroots effort. And I, I just want to take a moment, Nicole, and say thank you to um, the board members who have given so much in, in this past year to make this a reality, to have gotten this off the ground. Our, our website is, the, is jlblackfoundation.org, so certainly people can go there and, and learn about my son and learn about the resources that are going to, to be available. I just want families to know they're not alone. You, you feel like you are. You feel like in a way you're isolated, but you're not. And, and you know, as you've said, um, addiction does, does and this disease, it, it does not um, discriminate. Does not discriminate. No. It does not. And so just every day, um, I, I'm reminded of my son's note on that birthday card. When I was hopeless, you had hope. You had hope. So I hope those who are watching conversations with, with Nicole will know that there is hope. Dr. Leslie Kirby, that's me, and Nicole go way back over 30 years. I was just beginning my career as an audiologist and Nicole was a new news reporter way before she became a beloved news anchor. She has always professionally supported my hearing healthcare practice and I am so very excited to be her first ever Conversations with Nicole sponsor. You know, that's what we should all do, support one another. And that's just what my Lifetime Hearing team does with all of our patients. We make lives better and easier with communication so that people can love life, enjoy the grandchildren, enjoy church, enjoy TV, and hear the I love you's that mean so much. Offering the best in Belltone hearing aid technology, as well as providing cochlear implant solutions, we have become known as the PD's premier hearing healthcare facility with having evaluated more than 52,000 ears to date. With national award-winning services, call us for your on-time appointment. Don't give up. Don't there is give hope, up. Jeff. Hope, hope is happening right now with this news that you just shared with me, with providing resources for families, for those that are addicted, so they can break this cycle and keep people on track and save a life. The hope is happening. You are continuing to provide the hope in your in your son's memory. And for that, that has to give you a little bit of peace. It does. And there's no doubt that God has a plan for all things to work for his good. We don't Amen. know why tragedy happens. We, You would do anything to get your son back, but he's not here and he's with God. And now God is using him to save others, to do something bigger than you probably ever dreamed would happen with what's happening through this foundation and in Clarendon County, your home and surrounding areas and the lives that will be saved because of you and your son and your family. Well, you know, Nicole, I, I think that you, you don't ever move on. No. You never move on. But you have to move forward. Because our loved ones would want us to move forward. John Landon loved life. He was the funniest person in the room. I'll never forget when he was four or five years old at the Methodist Church in Manning. He went down for children's moments. He got the entire church laughing at something he said at four or five years old. And he came back and sat by me and, and called me down and whispered in my ear. I knew I could make him laugh. <laughs> what a great and memory. That was just his spirit. Yes. 
and such joy and such love that I know John Landon would want us to move forward, to be able to help others. He had the most giving hearts, the giving heart. And so I know that he watches from above and that he is proud of what we are doing in some small way to help others who struggle with this disease. I, I couldn't agree more with what you're saying, that he is looking down on you and Stephanie, your wife and your daughter and her new family. Give parents a sense of how you cope on a day to day basis, how you lean into each other when you have those moments of feeling so lost without your son. How do you move forward? Give us examples of how you and Stephanie do that in your family. You, you can't rush grief. That's the one thing we've learned. And some days are tougher than others. This recent Father's Day was worse than the first Father's Day. Um, you, you just have to, you have to sit in it. You have to accept it. And you just have to know that God's got you. And that your family and friends, they got you. And you just find a way to sit through the grief and know that a better moment is coming. Yeah. And that better moment does come. It really does. We have days where we do really well, and then we have weeks where we're really sad. But you know those better days, those better hours, those better moments are coming. Yeah. And I know deep down that we did everything we could. And that John would want us to move forward. And so just bit by bit, um, we are so blessed. We have a 16-month-old granddaughter. <laughs> she brings us incredible joy. Yes. So when we're really down, we just go get her. <laughs> and, um, of course, Nicole, I, I do tell her that I'm her favorite grandparent. <laughs> Naturally, yeah, I tell her that. Are. <laughs> of course. And, and so just don't you, tell Stephanie. <laughs> I know, exactly. So you just find those those joyful moments in a lot of grief and sadness. But I think the one takeaway is you just can't rush those moments. You just have to let them happen. But know that on that other side, the good moment will come. It, it will. will. It will. It and will. do you recommend for those who have suffered a loss, as you and Stephanie have, to get involved in any groups? Do you recommend therapy, counseling, seeking out your pastor for guidance, other parents who have been through this? What would be your advice to others in that regard? All of the above. Okay, good. Yes. I All mean, of the above. Those are good um, things. So I... we, we started off doing um, individual um, counseling with licensed therapists. That was helpful for us in the beginning. Then we, we found other things like our church, who is, that's been such a, a joy for us. Your pastor, your friends. Um, Stephanie has had a chance recently to speak at a Methodist women's retreat yeah. about John Landon. That was therapeutic for her. So you find those moments because I think the one thing, Nicole, you, you don't want anybody to ever forget your child, right? your loved one. That is so true. You don't want them to forget. And so whether it's the foundation, whether it's those moments of, of learning that another parent struggles and that you're able to just send them a text message or a quick phone call to say you're not alone. Not alone. And, and I'm here for you and we're here for you. Yeah. Those are the things you do. That's important. Those are important. Jeff, I want to thank you for sharing your story, your family's story, and for sharing John Landon's story with, with me today. I pray that by sharing your situation, what you went through, through my platforms, that we will save a life today, that we will give someone hope, that we will show them that through tragedy, you can overcome and you, your loved ones will never be forgotten. 
They played a role in this world. It was an important one, even though their life was cut short, their life was meaningful, it had purpose, and that person was important and loved. John Landon was loved. He had the best parents anybody could have. And you should just hold on to that. Like you've said, when things seem really hard, that today you're still helping others through his life. And what you're doing is phenomenal. I think the world of you and your family. And um, thank you. Thank you for sharing today. It was a, it was a hard conversation. It's emotional. It's tough. I didn't think I would get this emotional, but I, you're such a dear friend to me and to my family. And I'm so thankful for what you're doing and for the faith that you have, because I don't know how people get through this without faith and friends and good family. Amen. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you too. And again, remind folks of the foundation website so they can go and learn more as we close. Thank you. It's jlblackfoundation.org. That's J-L-B-L-A-C-K foundation.org. All right. Jeff, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Much thank love you to you and your family. Thank it, you. And to yours. Thank and you. And that will do it for this edition of Conversations with Nicole. Until I see you again, I hope you have a great day. This segment of Conversations by Nicole is sponsored by Lifetime Hearing Services, with three locations in Florence, Hartsville, and Camden. Visit us on Facebook and at LifetimeHearingServices.com. Until next time, be well, stay grateful, and be blessed. This episode of Conversations with Nicole has been sponsored by the following. AB Tax Service. AB Tax is your key to financial success providing quality bookkeeping, tax preparation, and IRS assistance for individuals, entrepreneurs, and small business owners year-round. Give us a call today at 843-413-0050. Ann King, brand name real estate broker agent, looking to purchase your first home, downsizing or relocating and wanting to sell? Ann King, a licensed broker with brand name real estate, is here to serve you. Got questions? Call the pro. Who knows? Call Ann at 843-245-6486. 19th Green Indoor Golf Park. Looking for something different and fun to do? Check out the 19th Green, Florence's only indoor golf center, offering regular specials, discounts to first responders and veterans. Located at 112 Woody Jones Boulevard, Florence, South Carolina, 29501, next to Academy Sports. At your place, healthcare. Need a DOT physical? Don't have time to wait in line? Need quick and trusted results? Call At Your Place Healthcare to schedule your appointment today, 843-289-5061, or visit them online at atyourplacehealthcare.com. This episode of Conversations with Nicole is sponsored by Red Silk Media Group. Red Silk Media Group specializes in business branding, marketing, and advertising services for entrepreneurs, startups, and small businesses. Give them a call to schedule your free 30-minute consultation at 855-773-3745 or visit them online at redsilkmediagroup.com. Red Silk Media Group. Innovative design to expand your brand.